Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Chamber Chat. We're happy to see you again here today. We have a very special guest with us today, Ms. Charlotte Stallings. Let's greet her Chamber family. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Carol. It's a delight to see you this uh, today and to be with all the Chamber members. Thank you very much. Well, we look forward to hearing what you have to say to help us pivot out of the COVID-19 pandemic and back into uh, an operational and profitable business. So before we start chatting about that, let me give our audience a little bit of background about you, Charlotte. Okay. Charlotte Stallings is the founder and president of Getting Smart LLC an executive development consulting firm that specializes in leadership and success. During her tenure as Vice President of Investment Strategies at Ameriprise Financial, Charlotte Coach pre presented to and trained financial advisors on strategies to drive results. That's important, results. Yes. That's yes. why we're talking with her today for results and to achieve greater success. She has been a featured speaker for the Correctional Management Institute of Texas at Sam Houston State University since 2008, and notably with the Senior and Mid-Management Leadership Development Programs. Recently, her firm was selected to develop and implement a Leadership Excellence Academy that spanned three years for the 4,000 plus members of the Operations Services Division of the Dallas Independent School District. So we're talking to someone who has lots of experience and experience in the banking industry. So we need people that know how to handle money and know, <laughs> know how to tell us how to make it. <laughs> she gained her knowledge of the nuts and bolts of business from her years at US Banks, Xerox, and over 20 years at American Express. Charlotte has made experience uh, appearances on CNN and other national, regional, and local media outlets. And she was also a weekly in-studio guest here at Fox 26 for a segment called Know Your Money. So Chamber family, let's welcome uh, Charlotte Stalling. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Carol. I feel so honored. Thank you. <laughs> we're honored to have you and we're, we're ready you. to learn today. Okay. So um, the first question that I have for you is, what are some measures that small businesses might want to consider in order to stay viable during this pandemic? So we're all asking that question. I'm a small business owner, real small. Um, it's me and, and my team and then other businesses might be a little bit bigger. So measures to remain viable. Those are the key operatives that come to mind for me in that question. So a couple of things I want people to consider. First and foremost, it is if you've not done this already, I encourage you to. It is really do an assessment. Assessing first what is happening. I like to say look within and then look with outside. So it's an internal glance and an external glance. And what are we looking at? We're looking at what's happening with the economy overall. Absolutely. And if this has not been something you've spent a lot of time or energy on, now is the time to get yourself acquainted with what is happening with the economy. We know the numbers that are being filed for unemployment, all kinds of things. And I'm not saying you have to take a deep dive. I'm saying be aware of what's happening in the economy overall and then start to funnel it down. And by that, Carol, I'm meaning look at your industry. So that outside glance, that inside glance, outside of your business, what's happening overall, um, what's happening in your industry. And I'll give you an example. So in my work, I, I do coach and train and facilitate and consult um, and I speak. So yep, looking at the overall industry, that's the hospitality industry that's, that's, that spans all kinds of industries that I touch. So that's the big picture view. And then my industry specifically as a speaker and associations that I'm connected to. So what I'm saying is, you know, assess. And where do you assess? You look at where you're connected, where your industry is. Um, and then assess internally. How about your systems and your processes and things that are happening for you and to your business? What's touching it, what, what hasn't, and it's now there's some connection. So do a very thorough assessment. Again, look inside, look outside. I would say this as well, in terms of being able to, measures to remain viable. Um, I, I want folks to consult 
those people who are, are smarter than you, who have a lot of business knowledge and savvy. Carol at the helm there at the, uh, the chamber, a lot of expertise from her background, her training, and so many who I know are on the board. Consult those people who have been resources for you uh, to really hear from them. Um, and I would, I would say this, Carol, none of us have experienced this before. We can't right, look right. to history, right? Right, right. We can't, even if we say for a minute, I'll be honest, I was saying, well, remember 2008, 2009, the, the whole hard housing market? Well, there was, that kind of ended and there were some things that could be done that President Obama did to kind of stem the bleeding and, wow, but this, we just don't know. Everything's a great big question mark. Right, right. So important to tap into the expertise, the insight, if for nothing else, just for the grounding of it to people who maybe have weathered some business uh, market up and down cycles, at least to help us steady ourselves a bit because we're all in uncharted water. So to remain viable, and I know you've got some more questions, we'll talk about pivoting. I love that topic tonight. It is assessment, look inside, look outside. And here's another key thing, Carol, this is not the time for anybody to say, let me get together with my committee. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk it out. We're going to chat it out. So you just leaned all the way back in your chair. <laughs> this, this is about speed, fast, quick. You've true. got to be moving. And I'm going to give you two examples of businesses, clients of mine. Um, the second week, like the first week of March, I remember traveling. I was out of town. The end of that week, there was more rumbling, more stuff. And I was like, oh, I don't know how that's, well, this isn't going to happen to us. They're not going to shut down our economy. By the second week, every time my phone rang, you know, we're going to postpone this. We're right. going to cancel this. We're going to reschedule. That, those were the only words I heard. Post, postpone, cancel, reschedule. Right. So I just knew. They'd call and they go, which one? You're going to postpone? You're going to reschedule? <laughs> right. right. And, and so cleared through June, literally just cleared off. One of my clients, however, they engaged me to deliver some training for their teams across the country. And they said, we've got content and such that's designed for in-person, face-to-face delivery. Would you be willing to just kind of pivot? I love what we're talking about today. And can you do this all online? And, and I hadn't done full days online and I've been in, you know, a participant in Zoom meetings, but hadn't really been at the helm and maneuvering a whole lot. I didn't say, let me think about it. Let me pray about it. I said, yes, yes, we can do that. Let's I was up all it. night for a night or two, figuring it out. There were some glitches the first time out, but I tell you what, I saw them. It wasn't about me. So this is not about me. This is, I saw them say, we're going to switch fast. And they did. So they were able to go out and get all of their clients to say, okay, we're going to stay with you. And um, they're, they're all in the online world right now. And it's, it's like fabulous. By contrast, kid you not, this is no slam. A client I was on with today, today was the first time they've pulled all of their salespeople together and got online. That's and I'm, glad. Glad. I, I'm glad, but it took a long time, Carol is what I'm saying. So this notion to remain viable, every business owner, we have to be fast and assess what you can, make the best decisions with the information you have, and then you gotta act. We, we can't sit and talk about it and twiddle our fingers and go, let me see, let me do some more research. We've got to act. And, and the only way to know if something's going to work or not is you gotta, you've gotta implement, you've gotta execute, okay? So you can tell I get excited about it, but that notion of, of to remain viable measures to take. Assess inside, outside, consult with those who've been trusted advisors to you. And here's a whole nother thing. Everybody's popping up and they're experts on everything. Have you noticed that or is it just? Yeah. No, I've noticed it. Everybody's an expert on everything. I said to uh, a mentor of mine who I reached out to and, and uh, she and I were talking, she's in Canada. And I said, I'm reaching out to you because you have been a consistent voice. When the markets are good, you've been a consistent voice. When things have been you know, turbulent, you've been a consistent voice. So it, 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 it challenged me to make sure I'm stepping up my game and being very consistent with communicating with my customers, staying in touch with my, my target uh, market and audience. So they know Charlotte's not just 
Johnny come lately, so to speak. And, and so I, I'm, I'm gonna stop right there, but uh, listen no, it's to- all, It's all good information. You know, one of the things I picked up on that you said about moving quickly. Yes. I think this is new for a lot of businesses to have to be nimble. It's like a new normal because things are so fluid and, and they change constantly with this yes. pandemic. It's like you have to be nimble and your team has to be nimble. Has Everyone to be. has to, you know, kind of shift their mindset to say, okay, I've got to make a quick decision. I've got to make a quick decision. Yeah. Now, what do you think about, you know, I know you said it's not the time to consult the committee, which is true. Uh, because sometimes those cogs can, cogs can kind of slow down, slow your process right. down. But how important do you think it is to, you know, when you're making business decisions, consult with your professional team, like your lawyer, your attorney? Uh, I mean, I'm, lawyer and attorney is the same thing. CPA. Says, says Esquire. Attorney yes, says, says Esquire. <laughs> She's like, really? They're the same? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I think it's incredibly important, whether you're a solopreneur or you are, you know, you've got 300 employees. And, and here's why. We're all in this mix together. We, we don't know, but I'm considering this. If there are decisions I'm making now that could impact me down the road and have a financial impact or implication or a legal kind of thing, why not have a dialogue with those experts well, you're an expert in legal matters. I'm not. Um, physicians and uh, CPAs and whomever they are, they're experts in those fields. Why wouldn't I consult you to say, yeah, everything's kind of hell in a handbasket right now, but I'm about to make this move. How will that affect me later? And, and here's what I want people to do. I, I make this reference often. I want us to think beyond the end of our nose. And right now it feels crazy. It is crazy. It's not a feeling. It is crazy. There's uncertainty. Right. I think for me, being real honest, that's the biggest part. We just don't know. We don't know, you know, sure, here in Houston, businesses are open. The governor said, have at it. Retailing, restaurants, the whole bit. I don't know. Do I go out there now or later? And, and it means a lot as it relates to business. But beyond here, so as much as we assess and we consult our experts who are part of our team that we pull in, Try to think beyond right now, think strategic, and we have to have two mindsets, tactical mindset and a strategic. Tactical is what are things that we do right now? And the game is changing sometimes. You remember a couple of weeks ago, it was minute by minute. Right. You hear something on the news in the morning and by afternoon it was totally different. Yeah. And the next day it was different. So that nimble attitude, that, that flexibility that is critical. Think here, this is tactical, and then think down the road. So my tapping into your expertise to say, as I think down the road, what if I make that move, what's the implication for now and for later? So there's great value in connecting with those experts. I think we all should. Yes, I would agree. We don't want to um, make uh, it. Some people are desperate right now. And while we definitely need to move quickly when opportunity presents itself, you yeah. wouldn't necessarily want to make a, a quick decision right now that might negatively impact us for a long time to come. For so, a long time to come. Yes, we appreciate mm -hmm. that advice. Um, so you had mentioned um, having to do something new with the, uh, with the sales team that you coached uh, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So with regard to you know, people that have acquired certain skill sets in their business, but let's say, for example, a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. um, could they take the skills, some of the skills that they've acquired and maybe start making masks? Yes. <laughs> I love how you're thinking. I do. I'm laughing because that's the kind of ingenuity. That's the kind of creativity. That's the kind of pivoting that needs to happen and that needs to happen quickly. So I've got an example. This uh, good friend who is in the same space that I am, speaking, training, coaching, and such. Uh, she really has a target audience, and all of her stuff dried up as well. Same situation, many, many, many of us, so I'm not singing a sad song, that's it's just how it went. So she has an online community and has stayed engaged with them, and I wanna 
sidebar real quickly, go back to that first question about remaining viable and uh, measures we should take. One is making sure we're staying in touch with the people that we've been doing business with. Now is not the time to retreat and to say, oh, I don't know what to do, or are they gonna be very upset or frustrated? Keep talking to that community. Mm -hmm. Keep on talking to those people. So come back to the, the example we're, we're dealing with. So my friend has had this large community and so set up some online things to stay connected. And her community was like, I really need this. This is benefiting me. So over the course of a month, she's done like some weekly kinds of check-ins and it's grown. Went from maybe 30 women to, you know, like 130 some women that were on just glamoring, uh, clamoring for it, for just insight, for reassurances and connections. So she was sharing some information that she had learned, and these were just notes she was talking or taking. Well, in a conversation with her, this idea of taking a skill set and then I'll call it repurposing, okay? Think great about, repurposing. Yeah. Great up repurposing, okay? So think about it that way. That skill set, it's there, or maybe some that I don't tap on the regular. So for her, she is a really gifted writer, as a doctorate, is just really skilled at so many things. So instead of it just being notes for her and her sharing that, I said, why don't you put this together and create an ebook? Yes, great idea. Great so idea. It, you know what? Those notes have now morphed into a book. So she's taken, writing is good, but that wasn't her first kind of calling thing, if you will. And, and now, so she's in touch with this guy we found on, on Upwork, uh, great resources there. And, and so she's She's going to have a book coming out of this. She didn't set out at the beginning for that, but that's what's come from here. So this mindset of taking those skill sets that we have. Now, someone might say, I don't know. This is the thing that I do or that my business is really focused on. That's how come I said earlier, do the assessing. And, and that's about a look inward. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to offer this as, as a way to help do that. Sometimes it's hard. We're closest to ourselves. Right. Yes. And it's hard. Carol, is it hard sometimes? All your skill, all your experience, all your know-how, it might be hard for you to really step back and go, I'm good at this. I'm good at that. Mm -hmm. I'm good at this. Difficult. Mm -hmm. It can be difficult. So the way to do that is to sit down with someone, not your best friend who's like, girl, you're the best at everything. <laughs> you're the bomb. You're the boss. Not that friend, right. but the friend who does love you, who does appreciate, they're your cheerleader as well. Sit down with them and just have a talk and say, I'm really trying to get to some other skill sets and ask them, you know, what are those things that you see in me that I maybe don't see in myself as a solopreneur or even for your entire team? So sometimes getting outside input can help you to really see what's there and to say, ah, I didn't notice that I had that skill set or this one. Okay, let me expand on these and what can I create from here? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I think that the um, having an outside opinion is, is golden because it causes you to see um, certain things that you hadn't seen before. Hadn't and seen. It, it helps you get out of your head, especially during this time when oh, yeah. we're all doing a lot of thinking and introspection, you know, having that other voice around uh, is is greatly beneficial. I've been bouncing ideas off of um, one of my family members who mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen uh, in a long time, and it's been great. And so the, you know, I I should ask him too. You know, what are some of the skills you think I have that um, might might benefit me in business outside of practicing law? Oh, that's great. That's a great idea. Yeah. Do it, do it. And, and they will say things that we never crossed our mind. And it's not what you've trained for. It's not your title. It's not even what you do. It's like they get to see these other things and we don't see them. So tap into somebody else who does know you and who's not just gonna go, oh, you're great at every, everything you're great at. Not just that person, but the person who really can look objectively and give you it's, it's not about feedback and here's where you need to strengthen. It is, what do you see in me? Mm -hmm. what, what are those things that I maybe don't see? Because I'm just so close to myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we can take that, you know, it, even after this, it's like a listing of your assets. You know, whenever we uh, do business evaluation, um, you know, looking at our assets, our liabilities, um, looking at our people, 
you know, what their skill sets are and what they contribute to our business, you know, looking at our customers, you know, who can we um, talk to in that database to help us to get to even further right. people, you know, maybe we should include what our skill sets are as well, you mm -hmm. know, um, not just as they apply to our business, our everyday nuts and bolts business, but maybe some other business ventures that we might be able to get into. So that leads me to my next question. What businesses or opportunities do you see coming out of COVID-19? Oh, that's that's a good one. And I, I think the, the sky is the limit for opportunities that might come out of this. Initially, some things that come to mind are, so, so I think of it this way. There's going to be pre-COVID and there's going to be post-COVID. Yes. We're, and we will talk that way yes, somewhere down will. the line. We will. Remember, it was like Hurricane Katrina, pre mm -hmm. that hurricane was life changing. Totally for many, many people, whether you were in Louisiana or not. Right. Uh, 9 11. Mm -hmm. and, and just like in our generation, we'll talk about those things. And, you know, my mother and, and her generation talk about things from way back. But, but this is a defining point for us, certainly a defining mark, this pre and then post. And I don't think any of us believes some things that we thought were, we talk about this new normal, um, yeah. a different normal. And I think it will be changing. So what, what will be different or industries or areas? I think, I think if healthcare in some kind of way, shape, form or fashion. Definitely. And healthcare for people of color. Yes. And if we don't get to the polls, however the polls look in November, little sidebar, the, the numbers just, we have to, we just have to. And, yeah. and, and it's not even about a party, a political party. It is, how come so many of these deaths, how come it's taken out people who look like you and I? So right. something's got to change there. And we all, we just can't say it. Something's got to change. We, somebody need to do something. We have to be the somebodies. Yes, we do. Yeah. And I have a dear friend who always says, we are the they. Mm-hmm. Because you know how we go, we they are definitely the they. Yeah. I mean, and when you said healthcare, um, I saw an advertisement on television that I noticed didn't really get any traction pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know, and it, it, it was about... Uh, it was some type of healthcare consultant. It was like okay. a wellness consultant. Okay. And so this, this school was advertising for people who wanted to, you know, teach people how to eat, you know, coach them through exercising, you know, help them with their overall well-being. But lately, I have seen Everywhere. that commercial quite Everywhere. a bit more. Mm -hmm. And I can easily see that being a new profession, a serious one that oh, people will okay. definitely sign up for. I agree. And to that end, so healthcare and, and so healthcare by itself is one thing, wellness, a whole category. Yes. That, yes. Yeah, that's what it is. And, and here's what, here's a couple of examples, a friend who works for a large, a uh, large consulting firm here in town. And prior to this pre COVID, she said her company had made the commitment that wellness was important. And so they paid a woman very well, who was like a wellness coach and her job was to only stay connected with by phone or through video conferencing or in-person meetings. Her job was to meet with every single employee in this department and just see how they're doing. Talk about it, recommend some yoga, some different things. Yeah. How about I bet post COVID, it's not gonna be one person in that company. There's gonna be maybe a whole wellness division. Yeah. Because well, Carol, wouldn't you agree? This whole thing has had us like stressed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, I mean, this has been something. I remember one day I just needed to get out of the house. It was rain. It was pouring down raining and our mother was here at the time and she said, it's raining, not just raining. It's throwing down. Are you going mm -hmm. out? I said, yes. I walked for four miles in the pouring down rain. Got so uh -huh. I just needed to clear my mind. And yes. so wellness overall, our health, our physical wellness, but our mental wellness. And I think that's going to be a thing that is huge and big. So healthcare, wellness, I think something to this whole parenting at home, not parenting at home, but parents being at home with these kids, not yes. these, their children. I think that's, that's a whole area. And, and I'm saying these things because here's another thing I've been saying a lot. 
um, Wayne Gretzky, he's a famous National Hockey League player, was very, very successful. And I think I only really know of him because I'm from Minnesota and it's way up north. Well, and I've, near I've heard of him. You, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Wayne Gretzky said a lot of good things. One of them that has just so resonated with me for years is he said, skate to where the puck is going to be. Mm -hmm. Not to where it is. Not to mm -hmm. where it's been. So I'll say it again. Skate to where the puck is going to be. Don't skate to where it's been. Because where it's been is behind you. It's, there's no action there. Go to where the puck is going to be. So for the business owners right now who are saying, you know, I don't know the other skill sets. I've tried to figure out all those other things. Maybe it's working, maybe not right now. Consider what are things going to look like after COVID? Yeah. And, and as we get to an unpacking and an after, because it's not gonna be overnight. No. Think about what that might look like and where there not, might be needs. So things that have been problematic during this time, parents being at home. I mean, on a dime, our daughter is 21, but if somebody had said when she was in middle school or even high school, but certainly middle school or elementary, okay, now you're in charge of, of handling, making sure she does all her homework all day and you be at home and you work and then you cook and you clean and you do been too much. So that piece is there's something there to help parents when they need to tackle that piece or something there. I, th I think there are opportunities in the space around, think about we've not been able to communicate with the senior citizens who've maybe been in the nursing's homes or people who who breaks my heart, who've passed away and, and they were just there with, with nurses and doctors who mm -hmm. thankfully were just being so caring and loving, yes. but how could we communicate? Is there some technology to be able to say beyond Facebook or, I'm sorry, FaceTiming or something like that mm -hmm. to help you stay connected with loved ones who maybe have some kind of illness that doesn't, pre that prevents us from being close to them. So I, I think the industries and the opportunities will emerge as they always have in business, and you know this, when a person can solve the problem. Right. area. Like the lady with the Spanx, I wish, I wish, I just wish. I wish I thought about that. I'm not, but how, how you can suck more of this in and suck it up <laughs> as you get the best material. And, and most, you know, when we think about a lot of businesses, whether they're hugely successful or smaller, they develop because they were solving a problem that somebody right. had. And it generally started with them. This is a problem. I want to fix it for me. Mm -hmm. That's the story I heard about Bucky's, like being from Minnesota and when we came down here and there's Bucky's. It's like, what's a Bucky's? <laughs> oh, it's a gas station. Oh no, it's more than a gas station. Right. It's clean bathrooms. And from what I understand, that was a story. This gentleman traveling across the state with his family was tired of stopping at places and the bathrooms are all messy. So that was his whole goal. Anyway, yeah, those kinds of things skate to where the puck is going. So there will, I think, be lots of opportunities, definitely wellness, healthcare, all kinds of things. And uh, for those who are thinking, what could I be preparing or doing? Again, how can you repurpose, repackage some of what you're doing so that you are viable when different happens? Yes. And, you know, I see post-COVID-19 as being a totally, almost completely new business environment. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the way that we communicate with each other, um, how information is distributed. Mm -hmm. So um, along those lines, you know, we have people who are going to, going to be looking for jobs uh, in this new economy. And then we have employers that are going to need to recruit for new business lines or the same business lines that they have. When mm -hmm. you think about um, employers recruiting, um, do you what do you think about the way they're going to uh, their processes are going to change as far as, as far as how they recruit and hire people? Mm, yeah, I I think now for certain industries it's pre COVID it could have been a challenge to get the right people because either there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of talent that's out there. So how can you recruit and get who you need? So I think there might've been some pressures and challenges based on the industry. I think post COVID it's, it's, it's going to continue to be a challenge if not more so. I think there's gonna be you know, a, a wealth of people who 
who desired to work. I mean, the numbers are just unparalleled since the, the early 20s with, with the levels of unemployment. So it's going to be matching what we need, especially if our industry is very specialized. Yes. Matching and finding those people who have those specialty skill sets and talent and knowledge and education. So it's going to be more incumbent upon those who are seeking employment to make sure that everything that they can leverage in terms of having their resumes packed with the right words, not just words to manipulate, but get up through in the algorithms to surface to the top of, of those resumes that the recruiters see and to be connected through different channels. So I will admit, like I don't do a lot in LinkedIn. I really should. LinkedIn is a great environment, very professional corporate business, social media area, and making sure that you're connected. That's, I think, going to be critical. So the way that they source and find people is going to be different, probably could be more challenging. Um, and as people are needing to retool themselves. So if the business I've been in or the workforce that I've been in is, is just really deflated, and I'm now needing to reinvent myself for another area, how am I going to do that? So those groups on LinkedIn could be a great source where you connected from college, from the city that you grew up in or your past employers, connecting with other people, relationships are key. So I think that's going to be the way for recruiters and the way for the people looking, who do you know, who knows what you know and can connect you to somebody who can help you get to where you wanna be. So relationships, connectedness, it's, it's like us, you know? I mean, we got connected through an event last December and we're <laughs> sitting at the table and, and connecting and find out we're of the same. Yes, we are. Which is the right way to be. <laughs> okay, I sidebar, I sidebar. But, um, and then, you know, connections. And, and so I, I get to be a resource for you and, and I won't overstay my welcome ever, but to reach out to you as well. And that's how you build. You stay connected, you support, you, those kinds of things. So I think those will be the critical pieces in the new post-COVID world. How are you going to find the talent? It's going to be through the connections and the resources that build connection and the person looking, I got to be connected more so than ever. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, what's so interesting about this post COVID era is technology. You know, people were complaining about how disconnected they felt because mm -hmm. of technology, you know, social media has taken over and, um, you know, there are reports that younger people don't really know how to carry on a conversation. People are feeling more isolated and more distant. Mm -hmm. And now that's all been shaken up. And we find that relationships and talking to people and right. getting to know them is really going to be most important because that's how we're going to all get out of this. We have mm -hmm. to talk to each other. We can't yes. just you know, text and email all the time. And people want to feel that type of closeness. So I would say that's a plus of coming out of this as far as doing business is concerned. It's going to make us have to um, reach out and actually talk to people, mm -hmm. understand them, you know, um, have conversations, have yeah, long conversations. Right. I agree with you. And I'm only chuckling there. You said we have to. Like we really do. And I love how technology, we don't see it as this big, terrible thing. It's been the way to stay connected to people. Um, this, this group today, the sales team, like 50 of them, and they're in Canada and the US, uh, they haven't physically been together in over a year just because of the way their business is set up. They have an annual sales meeting. And so this is a way for them to come together. So leveraging the technology, many families my sorority sisters and I, we got together last night. We haven't seen each other in a while. So it's, it's a, a way for us to stay connected. But at the core is the connection piece. So those looking for people to bring on board, those looking to be onboarded, we got to be connected. And I like what you're saying. Don't just make it a digital connection. Pick yeah. up the phone and call the people. Uh, do that. That's an important area. Yes. Yeah. Well, we have enjoyed talking with you today charlotte yeah, enjoyed talking to you yes ma'am we got a lot of great information um today chamber family so i hope that 
this was great for you, that you got some good information that you can use, that you can take back to your team and your colleagues and share about how to pivot out of COVID-19 for your business to grow and to be even better than it was before. So Charlotte, before we sign off, please let our community know how they can get in touch with you. Oh, I'd love it. And I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. I love the work you're doing. I mean that sincerely, not just because you've had me on, but you're doing just what we talked about. You're staying connected to your community, to the family, the chamber family. You're communicating. You're being proactive. You're not waiting for people to just call and say, hey, Carol, what's happening? No, you're reaching out and that's, you're modeling what we all should do. So I do love it. I'm, I'm on social media. I'm online. If you Google me, charlottestallings.com. I know that's lots of L's and T's, but you start typing, I'll pop up. And if I can be a resource to anybody who is watching and checking this out, I am happy to do that. One thing I did realize when this all happened, it's like my calendar got cleared and until some other things started happening, it was pretty empty and I thought I could twiddle my thumbs and feel bad or you know what, try to be a resource. So to my community, I sent a big e-blast and said, hey, if you could benefit from some coaching, some consulting, some training, here's some topics and I will extend that to you. Uh, and not come up later on and go, oh, here's a fee. But I say to anybody who's on the line out, if I can uh, be a resource to you or you're watching this, if you reach out and you say, I was checking out the chamber chat, and can you offer me some help on this or that? I will gladly do that. I'll send you a link. We can get some time on my calendar and I'll support you as best I can. Chamber family, please take advantage of that. You will benefit greatly by um, being coached by Charlotte Stallings. So thank you again for joining us today, Charlotte. Well, and I'd like you. to encourage our listeners, if you're not a member, become a member today. What you see right now are your uh, dues and your membership fees at work. You want to find value in the chamber, this is what we do. We try to assist you in any way we can, especially during times like these. So continue to follow us on social media. Check our website for COVID-19 resources, our social media for COVID-19 resources at uh, Greater Houston Black Chamber or Houston Black Chamber. Also, please support our businesses by visiting HoustonByBlack.com. Again, that's HoustonByBlack.com. You'll see a listing of our members in different industries, just about any industry you can think of. We have someone for you that can assist you. So please keep up with us. And if you would, consider a donation to the Greater Houston Black Chamber Foundation. We need your support to continue to bring you programming that can assist you in growing your business. So please consider donating ghbcc.com forward slash foundation. We appreciate any donation in any amount. So again, we're signing off. Uh, Charlotte, do you have any social media handles you'd like to? Um... Yes. So I, I'm mostly a Facebook person because I like to stay connected and to talk. So I'm Charlotte Stallings on, on uh, Facebook. And if you hit me and say, I heard you, I saw you on the chamber chat, I'll friend you because I kind of have a lot who are waiting and I haven't friended everybody and I need to. So if you do that, I'll, I'll friend you back. But I'm on uh, Twitter and also on Instagram at Char Stallings, just C-H-A-R and then Stallings, that's where I am. And uh, Carol, can I just say, I don't know when this will happen, um, but we're gonna be talking about some things for uh, I do this thing I call Wealth Wisdom Wednesdays. It started with my desire to, in April, reinforce financial literacy. April is National Financial Literacy Month. And it started with that idea. And I've been able to tap into some great experts like Carol. And uh, we'll be just even going forward with that. So on social media, I pop in there 20 minutes for a better 2020 is the goal. So 20 minutes of conversation with actionable ideas. That's my belief. If I can't give you something that you can use as soon as you log out, then I, it's a waste of time and I don't want to waste your time. I don't want mine wasted. So that's what we're doing. And that's something you can check out and glean some good insights and nuggets for you to go forward in your life. 2020 is going to be good. Despite how it looks now, it's going to be a good 2020. Agree. Agree. So everyone yeah. check in on Charlotte's Facebook page and, and, and see wisdom went well, Wisdom Wednesday. Okay. I, yes. I <laughs> it's those Ws. Know. It's the alliteration. I was trying for that. It's a mouthful, but I call it W3. It'll be all right. W3 uh -huh. on Wednesdays. Uh-huh. 
So, all right, everyone, thank you for joining us again every Tuesday and Thursday for Chamber Chats, where we seek to help you expand, survive, grow your business. And until next time, we'll see you. Take care. Take care.